This is SSPTV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. Celebrating a special commencement ceremony in the Hazleton Area School District, we'll take in some of the sights and sounds next. Good evening and thank you for joining us at SSP TV News. I'm Ken Cara. This newscast and all of our programs are available in HD on Service Electric Cablevision Channel 513. Now to our headlines from SSP TV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. Butler Township Police are investigating a fatal crash. Police Chief Brian Sabatini confirmed that it was a one-car motor vehicle fatality. Old Turnpike Road between Route 309 and West Foothills Drive was closed as a result of the accident. We will have more details as they become available. Please check for updates on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash news. Friends are doing their part to help the family of a construction worker who was killed while working Friday night near Chambersburg. 41-year-old Michael Frandy of Hazleton, a State Department of Transportation contractor, was setting cones for line painting contractor when it happened. He is survived by his mother, sister, and girlfriend. Friends have established a GoFundMe account to help the family. You can donate by going to GoFundMe.com and searching for Mike Frandy Memorial Fund. PennDOT spokesman James May was in our studios today. He reminds drivers to use caution when traveling through a work zone. When you look at it, there's nobody who leaves the house expecting to die in a work zone, and there's nobody who leaves the house expecting to kill somebody in a work zone. However, every year, right around 20 people are killed in work zones, which means that every, just about every three weeks, every two and a half to three weeks, there is somebody killed in a work zone in Pennsylvania. And so when you see those workers out there, we, we cannot emphasize it enough to make sure you slow down, turn your headlights on. There's, there's more fines that are coming now that if, you, if you're at fault and you injure somebody in a work zone, you can receive $5,000 fine, a six-month month suspension on your license. If you kill somebody and it's your fault, you can receive a, a one-year suspension, $10,000 fine. Um, you know, we double the, uh, the fines if they're in work zones. You can get a $25 fine if you don't have your headlights on. So there's all sorts of fines that we're putting in place, but really it comes down to driver responsibility and for, for those of us that work in work zones to make sure that we're taking the precautions as well. So we all have a part to play in this, and we just urge the, the motorists to, to please slow down and uh, help keep our workers safe. And in other news on this Tuesday, the Laurel Mall is growing again. We stop by today to get the latest news for shoppers. We are standing in front of literally the last available space in the Laurel Mall, the last retail front, and that's going to change very shortly. I'm pleased to welcome back our good friend Rocco Ruzzo, the property manager for the Laurel Mall. You have another announcement to make. Yeah, if you remember back at the end of May, we made the announcement that Brackney Leather was coming to the Laurel Mall and their target date open is August 1st. And remember we talked about it and I said, well, maybe we'll have another one down the road. It really came to fruition. And today I'm pleased to announce that the former Boulevard, uh, the Boardwalk Boulevard Arcade that was here at the Laurel Mall is now going to be, it's called That Bounce House. And they are located up in Wilkesbury near the Wyoming Valley Mall. This will be their second location. They're going to start renovation and the walls will be coming down. They're going to start renovation. And again, um, their target date to open is August 1st. And it's awesome because they not only have the bounce houses, they have arcade, video games, and they do all kinds of parties, whether it's a birthday party, communion party, things of that nature. So we're excited to have them. Their lease has been signed, and we can officially announce that Bounce House is coming to the Laurel Mall. So when more stores want to come here, where are you going to put them now, on the roof? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'll tell you, maintenance is a little upset with me because actually this was our storage space. So now we have to build a shed on the outside for our storage. So we have a lot of maneuvering to do, and uh, we're working on it. Well, that's a good thing. Yes, good problem to have, definitely. So we'll keep you posted on when that's, again, coming in August along with Brackney Leather. And we want to remind everybody that Sam LaSant recently did a show here at the mall highlighting all the many changes that have come to the mall. You want to encourage people to check that out. Yeah, I, I really do. And if they haven't seen the show, uh, take the time to watch the half-hour Sam LaSant show. He's been airing it uh, here and in Pottsville and all over. And it's really, I have to tell you, Sam did a good job because he looked at the... Laurel Mall did an in-depth 
look at what has taken place with Lexington Realty International, of course myself and Lisa, who's our general manager, on what has happened the last 22 months. So Sam really did a good job taking a walk and a tour around the mall and everything that we have to offer here at the Laurel Mall. All right, and you can watch that show on our app, our SSP TV free app, so download it or go to ssptv.com. Reporting from the Laurel Mall with our good friend Rocco Ruzzo, I'm Lisa Sugar. Thank you, Lisa, and good to see you, Rocco. Well, the Hazleton Area High School honored their 25th graduating class on Monday at its annual commencement ceremony. 709 students received diplomas in front of the high school building on a beautiful evening. Kent Jackson of the Standard Speaker reports that members of the school's softball team wore their uniforms underneath their gowns after advancing to the state championship game earlier in the day. Dario D'Amato was the class of 2017 salutatorian and Nicholas Vitigliano was the valedictorian. Congratulations to all the members of the Hazelton Area High School class of 2017. Summertime is here and who doesn't love bonfires and grilling? West Hazelton Deputy Fire Chief Brian Cara is here with some reminders about open burnings, fire pits and grilling in the borough of West Hazelton. Fire pits must be an approved fire pit. It can't be something that you built on your own it must be an approved fire pit of uh, ceramic or metal and it must contain a grate on top of it to stop the embers. Also, it must be used for preparation of food in accordance with borough ordinance. So you want to make s'mores, hot dogs, whatever. Um, make sure that you have food there. If a, if a fire officer is dispatched or a fire police or whatever is dispatched there, um, it has to be for the preparation of food. Also, it may not create an objectionable condition, which means that if it's creating too much smoke uh, that disturbs your neighbors, it is a violation of borough ordinance. To fuel the fire pit, it has to be natural wood, charcoal, or propane driven. You cannot put refuge in there, garbage, um, or anything that is uh, household waste. It has to be either natural wood, charcoal, or propane in order to fall within the legal guidelines. You may not grill or have a grill within 15 feet of your occupied residence. Now, nobody's going to come out with a tape measure and say, oh, it's 12 feet away. But you may not grill on your porch, and you may not grill next to your house. We have had residences burned down as a result of grilling in that manner. And just to remind you, there will be fines if you do not follow these rules with the fire pits and grilling. Open burning is also prohibited and may not happen without the authorization of a fire officer prior to the burning. To find out the regulations in your area, contact your local fire department for more information. Before we take a break, a reminder that you never have to take a break from SSP TV's shows. The new Samsung Productions app allows you to take us anywhere. Please use our app for special deals on golf packages as well, so download it today, please. Up next, a bit of a rainy forecast for you from the National Weather Service and our weekly outdoors segment. It's more fun with the Butterfly Guy this week. In sports, we wrap up our Pocono 400 and Weatherly Hill Climb coverage with motorsport journalist Dino Alberto. This is SSP TV News, your place for 24 hours of your hometown news and information. This is SSP TV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. Today I'm here with my friend Rick McCool and Rick, you're the leading expert on butterflies who I've ever met and through the study and the identifying of the different butterflies you've become an expert to the point it's become your career. And with all species of butterflies they're facing some risks from uh, pesticides and plants that have pesticides within oh, them as part the of their GMOs, brain. GMOs, yeah that's been uh, 
plaguing butterflies for a few years now because once they get back up into the Midwest where it used to be a million square miles of high grass prairie, now it's a million miles of genetically modified corn. And then once that goes into pollen, the pollen's going to blow out over to the host plants and unfortunately the butterflies are going to eat that and insecticides kill insects. Uh, now the biggest problem that scientists say are facing the butterflies are the neonicotinoid uh, pesticides, the ones that are made out of uh, nicotine, tobacco products. Poison like we have in cigarettes that they're using in crops. Yeah, and that is killing everything and they're finding out that's really what's affecting all the bee populations as well. It's a very efficient insecticide and it's being too widely used. Uh, companies that treat lawns a lot of times will use it. And another problem people might find, they might go to a big box store and buy a uh, host plant, figuring they're gonna help the butterflies. And a lot of these big box stores don't know what their suppliers are treating their plants with. And there could be systemic insecticides in that plant that could stay there for up a year. And so these people will buy these wonderful plants, think they're gonna do good, a caterpillar will end up on there, take a couple bites and it's gonna die. So that's why it's good you, when you go to buy a plant, uh, it's best to know uh, the person that's running the place because then you know what's in that plant or else look for the labels. Well Rick, for your activism, for the education you've given to everyone from uh, elementary school children to prisoners to TV consultants, we're so glad to have you on our show and oh, thank you the so much, work Ken. you're doing on behalf of these beautiful creatures. Thank you very much, sir. Time now for weather on SSPTV News. Today was another butte, but the rain is coming. Here's our local forecast from the National Weather Service. Tonight we have a hazardous weather outlook as we could see heavy rain and some minor flooding. So expect showers and thunderstorms likely before 11 p.m. Then a slight chance of showers between 11 p.m. and midnight. It will be mostly cloudy. Our low is 65 degrees, 60% 60 chance of precipitation. Wednesday will be mostly sunny with a high near 79 degrees. At night we're down to the mid 50s, partly cloudy skies. Thursday, partly sunny, high of 73. At night, 40% chance of showers, mostly cloudy. Low will be 56. Friday, 70% chance of showers and thunderstorms. Cloudy with a high of 70. At night, down to a 40% chance of showers. Maybe a thunderstorm as well, mostly cloudy. Low of 60 degrees. Saturday, 40% chance of showers and thunderstorms, mostly cloudy. High of 78. At night, a 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms, mostly cloudy. Low in the mid-60s. Tonight's weather is brought to you by Valley High Food Drive-In, the area's oldest ice cream and fast food restaurant. We're open weekdays, 3.30 to 8 p.m. Stop by for our ice cream and yogurt, now featuring fat-free, no-sugar-added soft frozen yogurt with flavors like vanilla, strawberry, and strawberries and cream. We also have burgers, hot dogs, fries, and much more. That's Valley High, Route 93 in West Hazleton. And like us on Facebook. We are finally outside. It is a beautiful day here in northeastern Pennsylvania at Edgewood by Sand Springs. We're back with Samantha to actually show you the greens finally. Thank goodness. We're so happy <laughs> for some great weather. We have golfers out here. We finally get to get outside, so we're super excited. Yes, getting some fresh air. And also we can show you uh, where you can have your cocktail hour here if you're a bride or also the grooms, you know, we can show you the golf course. Absolutely, so this space is so awesome for mm -hmm. cocktail hour, um, really at any time of the year. Mm -hmm. It's a nice um, different location from where you're going to be the rest of the reception. We have a beautiful built-in bar that we just got, um, some great pub tables out here for mingling as well. Um, your hors d'oeuvres will be passed out this way too, which is great, so it's a wonderful space that we're so happy to have. And Edgewood is growing. I know you're booking every day, so if you yeah. do have a date in mind for 2017, 2018, even 2019, really get on the ball with at least calling Samantha and getting here to uh, have a tour of the facility. Absolutely. So available uh, availability is obviously booking up really quickly, but for anyone who does have that specific perfect date in mind, I would certainly call as quickly as you can to make sure that you get it locked in. 
You know, as we're here at the bridal show today, uh, we're talking about, you know, people just do whatever they want for their wedding now. You don't necessarily have to get married on a Saturday or on a Friday evening either. Absolutely. So we can do weddings Fridays, mm -hmm. Sundays, Thursdays even. Mm -hmm. You know, you're actually entitled to a discounted rate um, on an off day. So, you know, whether you do the Friday or the Sunday, you can definitely get a discounted rate on that. Um, and really, you're right. People do whatever they want, mm -hmm. any sort of theme, decorations, any day that they would like to do, we can certainly help and accommodate. All right, so make sure you call today. The weather is beautiful and it's time to come on down and check out Edgewood by Sand Springs. And the construction process is complete for the new on-site ceremony location at Edgewood by Sand Springs in Drums. This beautiful new site is already being used and offers seating for up to 200 guests and breathtaking views of the mountains and the fourth hole of the golf course. Located adjacent to the cocktail patio, it will give couples and their guests the convenience of a ceremony, cocktail hour, and reception site all within feet of one another. It is beautiful. Hopefully some of these numbers look beautiful to you. It's your midday winning lottery numbers. Pick two, five, five, pick three, two, seven, one, pick four numbers, five, three, zero, eight, and your pick five numbers, five, nine, seven, three, four. Dino Alberto, motorsport journalist, is back to wrap up a busy racing weekend after this break on SSP TV News. Time now for sports on SSP TV News. Tomorrow is going to be a special Dave Day with Standard Speaker Sports Editor Dave Seaman. It's a Lady Cougar Spectacular. We'll get you all ready for Hazelton Area's matchup with Hempfield in the 6A State Championship softball game. Right now, here's another Keeping Track segment with Dino Alberto, who's the Vice President of the Eastern Motorsport Press Association. And he starts off by talking about their 2016 Driver of the Year, Martin Truex Jr. Just talk about his 2016, um, how he was successful and why he drew your attention. Well, he was just uh, a single car team. You got to keep this in mind. Uh, from out in Denver, Colorado, no less, uh, the hub of NASCAR is down in Charlotte. That's where all these teams are. These guys are a single car operation working out of uh, the middle of the United States. And uh, here they were. They were winning races. Uh, he was winning all of the big races. He missed uh, winning Daytona by about that much. Uh, he won Charlotte. As a matter of fact, he set a record last year at the Charlotte uh, um, 600, leading the most laps of any uh, driver. Uh, he went on to dominate that. Uh, he picked up uh, numerous awards throughout the year, and uh, he just missed getting into the chase. He was in the playoffs, but uh, the final four he did not make it to. But uh, he just had a phenomenal year, and it was quite the breakout. And because of that performance, he was able to win that award. And a Jersey boy as well. So for the Eastern Motorsport um, Press Association, that's got to be nice. Someone from, from up, up Easter. Yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> he actually cut his eye teeth racing at uh, Wall Stadium in Wall Township, New Jersey. Uh, his father was a racer. His brother, Ryan Truex, is racing in the trucks. Uh, he, st he, got a f he still has some family members that race uh, locally in the uh, modified and uh, late model ranks. They do some Legends car racing, so uh, they, uh, they're pretty prominent, but uh, they have a lot of tie-ins to the uh, Northeast region, so that kind of was cool uh, as well. So it was good to present him with that, and uh, we'll do it all over again this year in 2017. So that's exciting, but there's also racing going on at Pocono Raceway this week, and I heard a lot of good things about the NASCAR Cup Series race, the Xfinity race as well. You said it was the first time you got to see stage racing live, and you said now the drivers are already finding ways to manipulate the system. You know, um, I was always skeptical of it from the uh, get-go, and then I, I kind of warmed up to it. I thought, well, okay, they're giving out these points. I'm looking at this thing. It goes towards the uh, playoff, the championship. Uh, as a matter of fact, Martin Truex right now has garnered the most championship points on the Cup side. So on Saturday, when the Xfinity race took place, uh, it was done in uh, 25 lap segments, the uh, first two. Nothing really happened during the first 25, but what I did notice, uh, that and the second 25, was a number of drivers are coming in prior to the uh, first, se first and second segment, getting the checkered flag. And uh, what they do is they, sh they close the pits two laps prior to the end of the segment. And a uh, few guys were coming in, topping off with tires and fuel and going back out, knowing that they were going to get track position. So uh, it, was, uh, it was kind of interesting to see how they played that out. And then uh, obviously at the end, a lot of these NASCAR races, they, they really step it up. They, they amp it up near the end. And you saw that in Sunday's race. You saw that in Saturday's race, especially the last lap pass. 
uh, these fields are bunched up with a late caution or what have you, and uh, sometimes all of that strategy doesn't work out anyway. But uh, that's what I kind of noticed. Well, do you know, I, w I was at Pocono Friday, and then Saturday I was at the Weatherly Hill Climb working on a story for the sports show we do here called Out of Left Field um, with Mayor Tom Connors of the Weatherly Borough. He participated in the Weatherly Hill Climb, Dino, and he was a riot. I mean, he did it. He wants to get awareness out for the event. This did draw some attention. He had a lot of supporters there, a lot of his family. His um, son, Tommy, helped him in the pits, really helped him with his car. It was a family affair when he came down the first time after his first real drive up there. He said, I made 35 miles per hour. He was happy with it. He said, I'm going to keep there. I just want to stay safe. So he enjoyed himself. And here's what else he had to say when I talked with him. How was it? I mean, that was the first like official, you're all on your own, get up there. How did it go? Yeah, that was my first time ever. It was pretty crazy. It's a wild ride up there, you know. I give these drivers a lot of respect when they put some speed into that. That, that hill is nuts. I mean, say you almost backed out. Was it nerves? Was it the car parts? Was it both? Yeah, it was a little bit of car parts and a lot of a lot of nerves. I'm not a racer, you know what I mean? I haven't had a speeding ticket in 20-something years. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's nerve-wracking. So uh, I'm glad I did it, you, you know, and going slow in the beginning and being safe is what it's about. My family supports me, my wife. I love them, and, and I'm glad they're letting me do it. So that's a great story, I think. You know, he called his racing team Pit Power Race Team. I'm um, thinking of Pitbulls, one of his favorite dog breeds. He's very involved with the Carbon County Animal Shelter, runs it out there, and he wants to help Pitbulls get spayed and neutered. So what a great cause. We'll have more on that on Out of Left Field. A local guy, another local driver getting in there. And I think it shows, too, exactly what when you do go fast up that hill, like it's not just driving up a hill. You don't have to go fast in order to, to go fast, uh, <laughs> believe it or not, especially at Weatherly. That was my only regret over this past weekend. I didn't get to be there for the uh, Weatherly Hill Climb uh, because it's an awesome event. They drew somewhere in the neighborhood of over 100 cars. That's, that is impressive. It's a uh, roller coaster hill throughout the ride, only you're going up this thing, and uh, those drivers love it. It's one of the most technical hill climbs in all of the country. And it's interesting too, it's a huge fundraiser for a lot of the organizations out there. Mayor Connor's wife involved with Relay for Life in that community. I know they have a fundraising, um, they sell, I think they sell food out there. Dino, thank you so much for your time. I know you've been so busy, so please go rest up and get ready. There's another big race. Well, you're busy every weekend with um, local racing, but another big one coming to Pocono in July. SSP TV News would like to send our sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Eleanor J. Antolik, Flower Town. Funeral will be Friday at 11 a.m. from the Harmon Funeral Home. Friends may call Friday from 10 a.m. until the funeral. Brooke L. Greasing, Hazleton. The Richard W. Fritz Funeral Home is in charge of the arrangements. Paul J. Malone. Mass will be Saturday at 11 a.m. at the Annunciation Parish at St. Gabriel's Church. Friends may call from 10 to 11 a.m. at the church. The Firo Funeral Home is assisting the family. Anna Maria Novotnak, Bethlehem. Service will be Friday at 10.30 a.m. at the Notre Dame Church in Bethlehem. Friends may call Friday from 9.30 a.m. until the funeral. The Connell Funeral Home is assisting the family. Joseph R. Pavlik. Arrangements are under the direction of the Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home. Edward G. Radke, Barnesville. Service will be Thursday at 11 a.m. at the Hazel Chapel of the Crofton Hughes Funeral Home. Friends may call Thursday from 10 to 11 a.m. at the funeral home. Brenda K. Roman, Hazleton. Funeral will be Friday at 1 p.m. at the Faith United Church of Christ in Hazleton. The Joseph A. Moran Funeral Home is in charge of the arrangements. Magdalene M. Shiroki, formerly of Jetto. The McHugh Wilczek Funeral Home is in charge of the arrangements. Aloysius M. Severchik, Lansford. Mass will be Thursday at 11 a.m. at the St. Joseph's Parish of Panther Valley. Friends may call Thursday from 10 to 11 a.m. at the church. Donald L. Swank, Drums. The Butler Chapel of the Crofton Hughes Funeral Home is in charge of the arrangements. Well, hey, did you notice at the end of the Butterfly Guy saying that there's a butterfly near someone's mouth? That was wild. I missed it. I have to check it out again on the Samsung Productions app. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take it easy, everyone. Watch us online anytime at ssptv.com and follow us on Facebook and Twitter.